takes a bit of a a decision to decide to walk across the United States. Yeah. So it was um the walk was this this thing. I, I was in a a jewelry shop. My my best friend Teeny, she uh she owned a jewelry shop and she was talking to somebody across the room and she said, uh, my friend just walked across America. And I went, <laughs> and I was like, what'd you just say? And she just goes, my friend just walked across. America. I go, you can do that? <laughs> She's like, I guess he just did it, you know? <laughs> and and I, I just like declare to this jewelry shop. I'm like, I want to do that too, you know? And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you buying something? Or? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and. That was the reason why you... No, it's like, uh, so the walk is crazy, right? It, that's not the reason. That's how I heard about it. That was, that was even a thing. You know, it's like, you're going to dream to become an actor. You have to know acting is, even exists, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that existed, and it immediately caught me. Did you like walking around? Not particularly. Like not particularly. No, no, you know, I, walk, I think I probably had the I same attitude. I my car. Like, I decided to walk <laughs> Look, so so like I start researching it. I go home. I start telling people I want to do this one day, and uh, I even get in contact with people that have done it before. About ten to fifteen people do it a year, and they a lot of them written books. I start reading the books, and I realize there's a strategy to it. You walk east to west. You start in early spring in an effort to be done before winter, mm. and uh, each spring, like something was in the way there was some reason for me not to do it it was an album i had to finish it was a tour i had to go on to support the last album mm -hmm. somebody was getting married mm -hmm. and like one year turned into two two year turned into three three years turned into four four years turned into five Damn. dystymia <laughs> dystymia <laughs> in a major way Facts. because i'm letting my dream die Facts. and uh i said talk to my friend elliot I was like, yo, Elliot, I had an album coming out. It's probably my best album. It's called Real Good Kid. It had no hits on it, but I think it's my best one. And it's got to come out. And it's like, I couldn't, I couldn't make myself like go to do the, like the promo, the like interviews and the stuff. I was like, I, I can't do this. Go talk about myself and like. Playing, you play these shows like in the music you go do radio shows like a radio station will throw a concert and then in return they're like supposed to play your song but a lot but it's more like they'll play somebody's song on your label and it's like i'm out there playing for like 13 year olds and i'm like what the fuck i'm a 31 like this is weird you know what i mean and uh i was like elliot i can't do it he's like well what do you want to do I said, I, what I want to do is walk across America, but like my Fashion. managers think it's crazy. My agents think it's crazy. Everyone thinks it's crazy. He goes, that's great news. What's great news? That they think it's crazy. What do you mean? He goes, you got to understand, not all great ideas are, not all crazy ideas are great, but all great ideas are crazy. <laughs> God damn. And I just knew, like I felt it in my body, the like truth of what he was saying. And I just, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's never going to be a right time. No one's ever going to roll out a red carpet for me. No one's ever going to say, hey, you know, do it. In fact, they're going to roll out red carpets or reasons for me not to do it. Like, you're going to do irreparable damage to your body. Yep. You're going to commit career suicide. Yep. It's not going to be a career for you to come back to. No one's going to care. I heard all the shit, and it was just like, bro, this is my life. And, like, my dad is dead now. Avicii is dead now. Mac Miller is dead now. One day I'm going to be dead too. But before that day, I want to live my life. And I'm tired of playing in this little sandbox in West Hollywood, like going to studios with no windows and making music for 13-year-olds. Like it's got to be more. Mm. It's got to be more. And I said, well, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And I, then, like I said, you start east to west. So I walk supported which means that I had a friend in an RV. He would go ahead of me. People, when I say that, people think the car is next to me, like handing me bars. Uh, it's not like that. The car is way up there. I'm walking alone, and then like he's making sure we find have a place to sleep. Yeah, we yeah. have food, that yep. kind of thing. And I always try to be honest about that because there's, there's people out there that do Un it unsupported, unsupported yeah. wow. and they're way more badass than <laughs> me. So shout outs to all of them. And uh, we get this RV. This is before the walk. We drive. 
from LA to New Jersey. Because like I said, it's best to start east to west. The reason for that is the way the mountain ranges are lined up. You want to hit the Rockies at the okay. right time. Bro, we're dry. This takes a fucking week. To I was, drive, gonna say, I was driving say, across Kansas. I'm like, holy shit. This is long, bro. I got to walk this whole thing back. Yeah. You know? And I was filled with uncertainty and, and fear. Because I, t- I put on social, I'm going to do this. I said, you guys could come walk with me, all this stuff. And I know if I could do it. I mean, I had no idea. And I get out there and I get get to uh, Asbury Park in New Jersey. I get to the beach and I get in the ocean. That was a big thing. I got to start in the ocean and in the other cool, ocean. Cool. So in the water, the waves crashing on my back. And I realized, like, man, these thoughts of uncertainty and fear are just that. They're thoughts of uncertainty and fear. Nothing nothing more, nothing less. I take my first step. Step one is take one step. Step one, take one step. And uh, it was amazing, man. Typically, I walk 24 miles a day. I put on social that, you know, anyone could join me. And people came from all over America, man. And, yep. and I said, if you find me, I never posted like exactly where I was because it get kind of like unsafe to many people. Yep. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. And uh, when, when people came, I always asked two questions. I say, one, why'd you come? And sometimes they just they just wanted a picture. And that was fine. And sometimes, like I said, they, they're like <laughs> college kids and they're on the weekend. They're like, let's see if we can find him. Like yeah, some yeah, kind of yeah. like a scavenger hunt. But sometimes they came because there was no one else that they had to talk to. And it was like their dads also just died. You know, they were soldiers that had seen killing and had killed. They were, you know, professionals caught under the weight of their own lives. Um, And and one day this this young man came. He he was like, I I, want to... I want to like do something like what you're doing, but I'm too young. He's like, I got to get a job first and like start making money. And like a few days later, this, this, this guy came who was older. He's like 65. And he was like, I always wanted to do what you're doing right now, but I'm too old. My family won't let me and my body won't make it. And I started to see the difference between reasons and excuses, right? Mm. It's like, <clears throat> our reasons always seem valid to us, but when you really look at them, there isn't actually a difference. You, 99 times out of 100, our reasons are excuses wearing fancy clothes, you know? And the other question I always ask people was, and this is a good question to remember. You, I mean, you guys are fucking pro interviewers, so I need to tell you, but whenever I felt like trapped in small talk land, my, my, uh, my friend Kevin... He told me his question. He said, if you feel like this is just service level and you want to go deeper, ask this question. The question was, if I pray for you, what should I pray for? Sick. And sometimes, a lot of times, like one word answers, I get back joy, happiness, um, love, success. But sometimes it went way deeper. I was on the walking across the Wallapai Reservation in Arizona, and this red Ford F three fifty pulls the side of the road, and I got all sorts of like ideas and biases about who's going to be driving a car like that. I'm a little scared to be mm-hmm. honest. This young guy, twenty one year old from the Wallapai Reservation, jumps out of the car. He runs across the highway because I always walk in the traffic. And so he pulled up next week, runs across. I'm like, oh, please, like, don't <laughs> don't get hit, and. uh we talked for a while and I asked him that question. If I pray for you, what should I pray for? He thought about it. He said, uh, five years ago, my mom died from, from drinking. Excuse me. He said, five years ago, my dad died. My dad died of drinking. And three years ago, my brother died drinking and three months ago my mother died drinking so if you pray for me pray for my sobriety 
because I'm the only one left. And it's like moments like that, you're like, it's almost too much. He's like, wait right here. He runs across the highway again, dangerously, reaches into his car, pulls out this little leather satchel and puts it in my hand. He said, this is sweet grass and sage. Uh, and, and they'll keep you safe from bad spirits on our land. It's just like, I'm sure. that's why I walked across America, mm -hmm. you know? Fuck. No, I'm sure you've met amazing people along the, the journey. His Good. name was Rowan. Rowan. He got back in the F4350. He drove away. And he put his fist out the window like that. I'll never forget that shit, man. Those I'll moments. Never that. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing right now. Did he's an amazing guy because he wasn't. First off, like, let's acknowledge I'm a white guy on an Indian reservation. Usually, white guys come like it doesn't go well for them. <clears throat> right. He's got no reason to be nice to me. Like, what he should be saying is get the fuck out of here, <laughs> right? Off my land, yeah. And, like, he should be cynical about life. He should have this time yet or worse. You know, he should like every, you know, everything's gone wrong. And here he is showing up, not like to get something from me, mm. to give something to me. Mm. And so that's inspiring. man. Mm. That's inspiring to me. Like people that have so much less than me materially, but have more than me. Yeah. You know, because sometimes my phone ring and I'm like, I don't even want to pick this up. Because they're going to want something from me. And a lot of times it's not true. Yeah.